Hey guys and welcome back, it's Krillin here. Welcome to part two of my game programming series. Today we are going to be writing a little bit of debug code which will allow us to ascertain the location on the screen where we are about to place our bitmaps. So for example, when we place our mole, the bitmap drawing routine needs to know what the top left corner on your screen is going to be. We can't guess this, uh, well we can guess it, but uh, not very accurately. Best thing to do is to uh, move the cursor around on the screen to the location that you wish to place your image, or at least um, the top upper left corner of the image, and then display on the screen the X and the Y coordinates of the cursor. We can then make a note of these and we can pass these parameters into our, into our drawing routines, which will then place the bitmaps exactly on the locations um, that we've indicated. So to do this we need to obviously uh, capture the mouse move events which will pass into our function the x and the y or the current x and the y coordinates of the mouse. We can then obviously move the mouse to where we want our graphic to go and make a note of this x and this y location and it removes any guesstimation from the task. But obviously we don't want this code or the uh, the uh, x y uh, uh, coordinates or locations to uh, to appear in the actual fi final game so uh, what we will do is we will be putting in some directives which will be enabled when we uh, develop the code but when we go to do the final release we can throw a switch and uh, disable the debug code so in order to do this um, we need to use an if directive and a end if directive and within that uh, directive or those directives we can place some code which we can then toggle by commenting out um, a declarative directive which we will declare at the top of our code page so up here we need to uh, enter in a define declaration right at the top of the page we're going to go hash define and then we'll put my underscore debug okay and then we need to add the text um, that's going to put the the X and the Y coordinates of the mouse on the screen so this is going to be actually inside our on paint event here okay so down here just above the uh, line which calls the uh, on base place on base on paint base method we will create some text so to save a little bit of time, I have already created this text and I will just paste it in here and then go through it with you. Okay, so what we have here, we have a text flag, text format flags, and here we can set up some text formatting. The uh, horizontal center basically aligns the text that we're about to draw on the screen um, horizontally and center okay which basically means um, for example if you had a region a rectangle it would place the text directly in the center of that rectangle and the end ellipse basically removes end, the uh, end of any trimmed lines when places it with an ellipse or where you don't see that the next line here declares our font that we are going to use and we are going to use the stencil, stencil font and the pitch is going to be 12 and it's going to be a regular font as opposed to italic or bold and then this line down here actually pastes or um, draws the text onto our screen proper so text renderer dot draw text e dot graphic so e obviously is passed into the paint or on paint event handler here or function and then graphics is the device context we'll be drawing to. We can actually replace this line with our device context that we created here. And then on the screen we will be displaying x equals and then we will be adding the cursor x location which is an integer. So we convert that to a string and then we will be concatenating a colon onto that string. So we'll have x equals some random number colon y equals Again, we will have the cursor y location and convert that to a string. Okay, so we will see x equals a random number colon y equals a random number. 
And then we will define here, or the uh, actual method requires the rectangle on the screen that you wish to place your text inside of. So we wish to place our text, for example, at the top left hand side of the screen. So we are going to be coming in 30 pixels from the left of the screen, 28 pixels down from the screen. And the rectangle that we wish to draw our text inside of is going to be 120 pixels wide, 20 pixels high. Um, and then the system colors, control text, uh, which is basically the text you would the, the color of text that you see in a standard code, which I believe is black. Okay, and then we pass in our flags um, property, which we've created up here. That really is it. Now we've got cursor X and cursor Y here with a little red squiggle underneath it that basically means they have not been declared yet. So we will uh, declare those now. Right, okay, so we're going to declare these as uh, private integers and uh, we're going to make them global. Now, bearing in mind, this is just really debug code, so these will go away at the end of the development cycle. We're going to initialize these to zero, so int cursor x equals zero and integer underscore cursor y or current, current, uh, we call it cursor x or current x, so we'll call this cursor y equals zero, <coughs> semicolon. Okay, so now these two problems go away. Now, if we were to run this code, Let's do it, man. Bring the actual application onto the screen. You'll see now that we have x equals zero and y equals zero on the screen, as expected. But it's a little bit far right, a little bit low. Um, so if we, and that's basically, notice how that says zero, zero, cursor x and cursor y. And yet you think, well, how come it's somewhere over in the middle of the uh, form here? Why is it not right at the top, at the top left? Well, the reason for that is because we've told it to come in by 30 pixels and again come down by 28 pixels. And we've also said create this rectangle. Okay, so it starts at top left, 30, 28, and it goes out by 120 pixels wide and down by 20 pixels. And then we've told the text to write itself horizontally within that box. If we was to kill this here and replace it with, oh, we need to stop the application before we can actually make changes. If we was to press the period here, you'll know you've got a bunch of options here. Look, a horizontal center is what we've currently got selected, but we can select left. Okay, now this will place the text inside our rectangle, but to left align it inside our rectangle, okay? So we move this over here now, and you'll see the text is moved slightly over to the left. So it's 30 pixels out, 28 pixels down, Align to the left, okay. And just to prove a point, we'll set this to zero, this to zero, and run it again. And now you'll see the text is actually at the top left hand side of the screen. Marvelous. So the next thing that we need to do is obviously capture the mouse move event. So let's go to the form, click on the form. Go over here to the properties on the right hand side of the screen. Click on our little events icon here and look for the mouse move event. Okay, so just scroll down, scroll down until you see mouse. There we go. Mouse up, mouse move. Double click mouse move, and you'll see now we've created the mouse move event handler. Now, all we need to do here is assign the mouse x and y coordinates to our cursor x and y coordinates, which then obviously are fed into our on paint event down here which displays the cursor x and y locations on the screen so that's quite easy what we do here is we obviously create our or sorry um, reference our cursor x and cursor y and we're going to say cursor x is equal to and then over here where you have mouse event arguments this is where the uh, mouse details or the mouse cursor details are passed into the method they've been assigned the property E, so we'll type an E here and then press the period so we can look at the properties within inside the uh, mouse event class. And you'll see here we've got buttons, uh, clicks, deltas. So this would be uh, information regarding whether the button was clicked, etc., etc. But down here you'll notice we've got an X and a Y. We will want to select X, semicolon. And then just below that we are going to do the same again, but this time for the Y property and then we're going to go e dot y semicolon so now that will um, assign the mouse x coordinate and the mouse y coordinate to our two properties up here which we created here to our two parameters 
And then next thing we need to do is obviously um, call the on paint event. If we didn't do that, then the X and the Y coordinates on the screen would not update. So to demonstrate, we'll start the application and uh, we'll move our cursor around and you notice the X equals zero and the Y equals zero are not updating. That's because we're not telling the form to repaint itself after we move the mouse. Okay, so to do that, we need to refresh the form. And that's pretty straightforward. So we type this, which references our form, period. And then here you can see all of the properties inside our form and all of the objects, classes, events, la 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 la. Not interested in any of those. We're just interested in the refresh method. So we'll type R E F and you'll see that the list is filtered. Double click on the refresh, enter a couple of parentheses in the semicolon, and there you have it. Now each time we move the mouse, this method is called. We prove that by putting a well in fact let me comment out this refresh for the moment just to prove something to you. So we're going to put the uh, breakpoint on here, you just click in the little bar over to the left here and that'll place a breakpoint. So now when we execute our application and move the um, cursor around inside our screen, look, we hit the breakpoint, hit continue, get the application back up, go back into the form, look, bosh. So each time we move our cursor, we're hitting that breakpoint. Now, stopping the application, moving the two forward slashes, we're now going to be refreshing the screen each time we move, well, each time this method is called, we will be refreshing the screen. And don't forget, X and Y will be representing the X and Y coordinates of the mouse, which are then going to be assigned here to our two properties, which should ultimately be conveyed to the screen, and we should see the current X, Y coordinates of the mouse on the screen. So let's run that, bring our application back over, and then let's move the mouse down onto the screen. And voila, you can see up here on the left now, as we move our cursor around, the X and the Y coordinates of the screen. Now I know what you're thinking, what is the good of that? Well, when you're placing um, images on the screen, you need to know uh, exactly where you want to place these things, you know? And uh, as you can see, we, we don't have a grid here. It's very difficult to, you know, determine exactly what X and what Y is anywhere on this screen. So by moving the cursor right now, we can say, the tip of this arrow on my cursor is currently at 111 X by 92 Y. So when I put my sign up here on the top right and my sign is say 400 pixels wide, I know to come out from the right by 400 pixels, okay? So look, the left hand side of the screen is zero, right hand side of the screen is 575, so that means I need to come in by 175. There, or until I see 175. Now I know the distance between my cursor and the right hand side of the screen is 400 pixels, so I can comfortably fit a 400 pixel wide image in there. Up here on the top left, we've got to put a scoreboard in there. We don't want the scoreboard right at the top left. We want it, say, about here, for example. And then we look up at our mouse, mouse coordinates, and we can see that that's actually 29 pixels in from the left, 27 pixels down from the top. So we can make a note of that on our notepads. We can put those two um, parameters then into our bitmap drawing routine, and that will place our image exactly at that location. Okay, so it's perfect. And also down here, you'll see the hills only come up to about 30% of the screen from the bottom. So we don't want our mole going above that. So what is the Y coordinate for the top of the hills here? Okay, well, the lowest part is over here. We obviously don't want the mouse, going, the mouse, the mole, Michael the mole, going above this point. We can see by the uh, Y location on the top left hand side of the screen for the cursor, it's currently 257. And as we go down, that goes up to 258. So we need to make sure that our mouse Y coordinate, when we generate that randomly, does not go below 258. And then does not go above 405, okay, or 400. Again, over to the left, you'll see we don't want it to go any less than zero, and we don't want it to go any any greater than 582. So we will be setting up some random function generator, random number function generator later on, uh, to generate the X and the Y coordinate for the mole. And uh, we now know that what the bounds are that we have to stay within. So that's a very useful little um, debug tool to create. It's something that just you know reads the mouse for you and helps you in. Uh, laying out those uh, images. Press the stop to stop this now. 
I mean, you know, I said earlier on about the uh, the, the hash define. Then you want to know what that's all about. Essentially, this code here, we don't want to see this, or we don't want this running in the final application. We need to comment that out, um, but we don't want to comment it out because we're still using it. Okay, so we need to, a way of turning that on and off. Well, that's where these directives come in. So if you type hash if or gate if here at the beginning of your line and then at the end of your block of code you type hash end if okay that defines a region and this region now is um, going to be disabled or oh, it will be disabled what we need to do here is need to give it a label and the label that we're going to give it here would be my debug which we've created up here so this my debug is the switch so when we run it you see that we've got our cursor function running and then if we comment out this hash divine up here and rerun the code get our little application back on the screen you'll notice now that the x and the y have dis has disappeared yeah so that's a great way of um, remember to stop the application before you make changes start her up again so that's a great way of uh, yeah enabling and disabling debug code within your uh, within your project so that is the that's all we need I think as far as debugging goes remember this code will eventually disappear um, but for now we will leave it in here because uh, it's going to come in handy for debug purposes again we can create a couple of more regions around sections that we want to uh, turn on and turn off when we're debugging as opposed to not debugging okay so by uh, my debug control C control V so now when we actually comment this out <coughs> what we're in fact doing as you'll see here notice how the text has gone to gray that text has gone to gray and this text has gone to gray so that basically means that these blocks of text would no longer be included within the uh, compile or within the final binary when the application compiles cool anyway again it's not really um, much to do with game programming as opposed to application debugging um, but we've demonstrated here how to write text to the graphics display on the screen We've demonstrated how to intercept the mouse move event and how to display the current X and the current Y location, or sorry, the current X and the current Y coordinates of the mouse onto the screen. And we've learned how to enable and disable uh, direct, uh, regions of code using um, the if and the end if directives. So this vid now has gone on for 18 minutes, which I think is plenty long enough. I hope you found it useful. Um, now that we've ascertained what our or where our coordinates are on the screen, we can actually comfortably place our bitmaps. So in the next video, we will uh, actually be placing some bitmaps. Okay, and it'll start getting more interesting. So until then, guys, look after yourselves, and I'll see you in part three.